a very quiet machine. I guess that's the advantage you get with a uh, brushless motor. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna need some sort of stand to mount this mill. Uh, you can buy one from Precision Matthews for a few hundred bucks, but instead we bought this guy. I think it's gonna be a lot more useful for us, a lot more tool storage. So all we have to do is find a way to mount it on top, and we're gonna start with this chip tray. So you're probably wondering, is this gonna hold the 250 some pound mill? Uh, short answer is yeah, absolutely. Uh, this thing is from Harbor Freight, but it is pretty solid. Uh, pretty impressed with the build quality of this, so I think we're gonna be just fine. The secret is just to kind of distribute the load where the tool chest is meant to handle it, so we don't need that. And our plan is just to build a steel frame that goes around. Uh, the outside of these things is where it's strong and some cross braces that it's gonna mount the chip tray. So that's it, let's get to work. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are we, barbarians? Well, yeah, but... I use the scissors. Wow. Jeez. Those work really well. Yeah, they're not bad. They're made by Fisker. Yeah? You know those crazy fins. Is it fins? fins? Finish? I don't know. Very nice. Yeah, that'll do. Tiny skateboard, 250 pound mill. Quick screw it around, let's get this thing on the thing. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, three, two, one. Back, back, back your fingers. There you go. Okay. A little bit more. more. Okay. Alright. Okay, it looks pretty awesome in its spot. I think this is a great spot for it. Yeah. What do you think? First thing we do is tram it? At least. Let's tram it. All right, this is gonna be pretty difficult to show on camera, but uh, we've got a dial test indicator mounted in our spindle, and I've set it to, well, I already know this because I've done this once, but I've set it to minus one here, and we rotate it around, and we get 
plus one here. So the whole thing has to be rotated just a tiny bit. It's only two thou out, but we're gonna see if we can get it just as perfect as we can. Before anybody comments about the video that this old Tony did on making square things even more square. I've seen it, I ignored it, I understand. I just wanted to mess with the mill for a little while. And I ended up with a nice little cube. It's far from perfect, but I had fun making it. Alright, I'm sure a few of you guys by now are wondering why we just bought a mill when this whole deal was to build one. Uh, and the short answer is that we had an opportunity to, uh, and it's going to help us a lot with building parts for both the surface grinder and the giant mill. Um, but the long answer is a little more complicated. Let me let Ryan explain. So let's go back to the beginning where I started, which is, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 years ago or something. I walked into a machine shop and they had a CNC. I was young, I knew nothing about them, I thought they were very cool, and I wanted one. So I went and looked them up and they were twenty-five dollars or $30,000. And then, being a young punk kid, I thought, well, I'll just build one. Uh, and this, of course, was before the days of cheap Chinese mills and Arduinos and Tormach, maybe. I don't know. But I thought if I could get stuff to, you know, a motor to turn precisely using a computer, that I could do this. I didn't really know anything, obviously, and I found out that was the easy part of it later. But, you know, point being, I ended up making this, which is made out of... Uh, industrial dot matrix printers that I got for free from a surplus shop. Uh, I don't know where the z-axis is. Apparently whatever that was was embarrassing enough that I threw it out. So once I learned as much as I could from this, I went on and built the second one. So this is version 2, although it's actually probably like version 2, 3, 4, and 5 all at once, because once we had a good frame we kind of kept modifying it. We learned a lot with this. We learned about, you know, G-code and CAD and CAM and, and all these other things. What we didn't learn was sort of all the other stuff like chip load and uh, milling in general, the, everything that wasn't digital. So we needed something a bit more analog. And that brings us to my new toy, which, you know, normally I'm the guy that says why buy something nice when you can build a crappier version of it. But in this case, this is something different. Uh, I am sure this will help us build parts for the lathe and the surface grinder and the mill and whatever else. But the truth is, this is like a childhood dream come true. So let's go build some stuff.